I'm here with my two good friends, George and Chris from Tampa Jiu Jitsu. Thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it. And we wanted to do this actually for a long time and we finally had a chance to do this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, George. Thank you, Chris. My pleasure. <clears throat> so uh, let me start with you, Chris. How long have you been doing Jiu Jitsu? Uh, I started messing around with around 1999, but really started training, I'd say 2002, 2003. And uh, I believe you're a black belt? Yes, sir. And uh, what about you? I started uh, seven years ago. Seven yeah. years ago? Seven years ago. And uh, uh, you're, you're a brown belt? Brown belt, no. Okay. So you, you, obviously you guys have a, a place down here at Ybor City Jiu-Jitsu? Yes, sir. Ybor, huh? Ybor City Jiu-Jitsu Club. Uh, Ybor City <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu Club, guys. Don't forget that. <laughs> and how long has it been open? Uh, seven and some change years. Seven and some change? Uh, how many classes do you guys teach usually? Uh, well, there's about three or four classes a day, seven days a week. So, except for Sundays, we do an open mat. So, um, twelve. I don't know, five times <laughs> twenty something classes a 20, week. Wow. Yeah. So, Plus kids classes too. <laughs> how did you guys get involved in jiu jitsu? Can you tell me a little bit? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Me, I always, you know, always want to see, you know, saw the UFC, saw yeah. Hoist Gracie. I'm like. Ever since I was a little kid, I'm like, oh, one day I was going to do it. I used to walk in front of his uh, school in front of in Chicago, Adam Resurrect School. I used to see him pass around, like, one day I'm going to do this. One day came and finally did it. It was just almost uh, 20 years later, you know. But yeah, that is awesome. And Chris, how about you? How did you get involved in this? Um, I got to go through the <clears throat> transition that everybody went through with, like, the zeitgeist of the martial art around the... Uh, turned from the 90s to the 2000s when people realized that Taekwondo and all these, these arts weren't as effective with the uh, UFC coming out, yes, things like that. Yes. So I got to see that. I was in uh, Kung Fu and Muay Thai and, and stuff like that and uh, just saw the UFC, tried it out a couple things in my Kung Fu class. People got mad, but it worked, so the rest is history, I guess. So uh, how old were you guys at the time when you, uh, you know, started doing this? You, George, because I got to do math. <laughs> so, I was uh, 34. 30, 34 when you started it? Yeah. Wow. I started late. So it's never too late, actually. And it's never too that's late. That's the average age. That's, that's the average, average age. Um, to, I'll answer the question in a second. But that's, uh, yeah. with jiu-jitsu, you, it's a more of a refined and mature martial art. So it's a serious art. It's not something you do um, as a, a fun activity. It's just a fun activity, but it's it's a little more serious. So you get a lot more mature students in in jujitsu than you would say like a taekwondo school or something like that. I'm, I'm assuming. I feel bad that I just said that like that, but um, so 30s, late 20s, early 30s are the average age that people start. Um, really, uh, just because they've they've been able to gather enough knowledge up to realize that this is the one that they want to do and stick with for the rest of their life. You know. You know, like any other relationship, you know, you don't get into that serious one until, until almost middle age, right, unfortunately. Some people get in real early, 15 years old and stuff like that, and, you know, they're high school sweethearts until they die, but some people, we don't find it until we're in our 30s. So, <laughs> so can you tell me the difference between jiu-jitsu and Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Um, no. You guys teach <laughs> Brazilian jiu-jitsu, yeah. I mean, jiu-jitsu as a whole. So, using the word Brazilian, it, in front of it just denotes that it's more emphasizing the groundwork um, and less dogma. At least that's what it was originally. So it's, when you say Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, we're not worried about all the bowing and things like that. We're worried about the practicality and what works and, and shaving off the stuff that, that doesn't work. And where, when you think of like a formal Japanese Jiu Jitsu class, it's probably more bowing on a hardwood floor sometimes and more small joint manipulations and not as much practical actual sparring work to see that what works. We do a lot of, you know, 100% against 100% against each other to, with our techniques. So do you prefer one of them more than the other or just... Uh, Obviously, yeah, of course. Um, I'm a man of science. I'm, <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm joking, but, but I do like this scientific method that you get to use in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as opposed to a more formal, traditional uh, martial arts class where you're doing a form, you don't actually know the practical application, then you find out what the practical application is, and then you never get to really try it on someone. So you never know that if it works or it doesn't work, and then so you, it doesn't become a part of you. Where jiu-jitsu, you get to work with that technique, work with that technique until it becomes a part of you, it becomes your muscle memory and, and just part of your vocabulary. You know what I mean? 
um, like learning a language. So with a traditional martial arts school in the sense that I'm talking, you would be like a Duolingo or one of these, these, these programs where you're learning words, but you're never learning how to use those mm -hmm, words. Mm -hmm. So you're never learning the language, you're just learning some of the vocabulary from that language. Whereas in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you're learning phrases, you're learning how to use those phrases, then you're learning somebody that's going to, learning in a way that if somebody says something, you can respond to them, then eventually you can get into an argument. You get so proficient with the language, you can get into an argument, and maybe you can even force your opinion. Or you can slyly get your opinion in, one or the other. But you learn that language, and I think that's a big difference in the training modes. How long do you think it takes to, for someone to be able to, let's say, defend themselves uh, starting jujitsu? Six months. Really? Oh, George, I'm sorry. I yeah, no, I, agree. <laughs> I, I agree the same thing. You know, you, you, the, the cool things about it is you, know, you could go to one class, and that one class you could learn one thing, and that's the one thing that sticks with you the whole time, and probably could use that to defend yourself within the first day, you know? Sign so, me in. So <laughs> like, the, what, <clears throat> Um, one of the things that the thing the main thing right so uh, the, the thing that I was gonna say maybe it's not the main thing is just being able to be close to somebody the idea of contact and being comfortable in that situation I think is, is, is invaluable to protecting yourself the best martial art right is just physicality being able to run away get away from have the smarts to, to see the situation get away from the situation but once it's something happens you get used to being con in contact with somebody so you don't get nervous and maybe it's even a trigger to click you into the now whereas other people that have never experienced that 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 I'm in your face yeah, yeah, exactly. they they lose yeah, yeah, yeah. they lose the moment <laughs> they get scared they freeze up yeah, yeah. yeah. so I'm 52 do you think there's still some hope for me come on no. <laughs> come on I'm not gonna take it easy with you how about that I'll no, tell you I that right actually now a lot of surgeries on the past I said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no uh, absolutely <clears throat> absolutely so uh, let, me, let me ask you another question. Do you think nutrition is also important when you're when obviously, obviously being involved in the fitness? I know it is, but I wanted to ask you guys from your perspective of, of, of nutrition and, and jujitsu, do you think it's important? Absolutely. I think it's super important because, you know, it's like a car. You put it, you know, you super. put the, yeah, right. your car, so your body's a machine, you know. Absolutely. You tr treat it well, do, you know, put the, you ain't gonna put the cheapest gas in in a sports car you know you, you want to put you want to put the best thing possible and go in there and actually you know because it'll help you with your recovery it'll help you with your energy it helps you with so so much even sleep you know so if you're not you know if you're eating just fillers and junk food then exactly. your your body's not going to perform to <coughs> what you want it to so i know you're a, a plant-based kind of guy that's why i brought this this particular protein it's one of my favorites it's got about super different 50 foods in it uh so do you believe in plant-based a little bit more as far as energy goes comparing to just eating meat and protein protein yeah because i was on a different side of the spectrum before you know before i went plant-based i was eating like 12 to 14 pounds of chicken breast mm -hmm. and Me you know it, it always comes down to feeling super lethargic you know so i'll be like three o'clock you know i'm like man this is probably because i need coffee so i'm eating all these things and who you know it's not i wasn't eating the best chicken i was just eating lean chicken breast i didn't care what it was as long as you know, but then when I started switching out to a different plant-based protein, uh, or plant-based everything, basically, I went raw vegan first, and I actually seen the difference where I'm like, I had all this energy, I'm losing fat, I'm, you know, just feeling great, and it actually helped my mood up a lot. I just want to add to that, exactly, I'm the same way, you know, being involved in the fitness industry for almost 39 years, we were kind of brainwashed with protein, 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 and more protein. But, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good for <clears throat> building muscle, but I think you can also build great quality lean muscle mass with eating a lot of plant-based type of food. So I 100% I agree with that. Uh, <clears throat> let me ask you another question. The majority of your, your clients, uh, what age group they are? <clears throat> every? I, I, every age group. But I, I do really... Um off the top of my head, I would say 34 is, is a good average. 34, or maybe even higher. Yeah. 34 or higher. Mm -hmm. uh, well, <clears throat> originally when I started working out, I kind of wanted to get involved in that. But where I used to live at, they really didn't have anybody that he knew anything. Actually, most of the uh, the, the teachers, or so-called teachers, they, they 
uh, were more of a student than anything else. So I wish I, I, I could have... like to think of myself as a student still. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guy. <laughs> black belt. And it takes a long time, actually, to become a black belt in jujitsu industry. How long did it take you? Some, some, some people, it takes longer than others. Almost 20 years. <laughs> uh, it took you almost 20 years? Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to cut you off on the point you were going, but about that average age, I think part of it is because jiu-jitsu is such an ego-ripping um, activity because you're going to get beat up for the first year a lot. You're going to beat yourself. You're going to get beat by people. You're going to get be beat by people that you think you can beat when you first see them. Um, that's the magic of jiu-jitsu. So I think it may take a little bit more mature mind to be able to stay up with the martial art. I wish we could have a mature mind when we had the physicalities. Right, right, We'd be amazing, right? right? But, yeah. you know, you don't give wings to snakes, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I want to ask this question more about, you know, myself. I do want to learn a little bit uh, of jiu-jitsu or, or, or at least uh, to be able to defend myself. Uh, so, uh, somebody like me who had nine surgeries done because of heavy lifting throughout all those years, uh, is it still possible without really injuring myself because I'm just getting ready to actually go for another surgery for a, 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 I have a tendon problem in this one. I have shoulder surgeries, back surgery, I, I, you know, surgeries all the way around. So is it possible to still be able to do that without really hurting yourself more? It, absolutely. Um, do you want to, I, no, you have surgeries. I, 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 have, I, have, I have fusions, I have surgeries. Um, I was a airborne in the army, a bunch of stuff too. Um, Sorry to be so loud. <laughs> That's great. The, that goes back to the ego. Because it's not like you're in a fight, in a jiu-jitsu match, you're not in a fight that you can't get out of. The guy wants you to want to get out of it. He wants you to tap and say you're done. So that's up to you. When it, when it, it, the intensity, when you stop, all of those things are up to you. Where you play, where you fight from, it's all up to you. Where you want to. You don't, if it's a lower back injury from lifting or something like this, maybe you don't want to play on your back as much. Mm -hmm. Stuff like this. But... You, absolutely. I mean, one of the founders of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, he died in his 80s and he was doing Jiu Jitsu up until the day he died. You know, and he wasn't a uh, super physical looking guy when he was doing his Jiu Jitsu, but he was still doing Jiu Jitsu and he knew the techniques, you know, so. So let's talk about the, the founders. Uh, can you give me a little bit information about how it was found? Uh, Again, this is... Broad, I know. No, no, no. It's a super, for a short history as Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has been around, it's still very occluded because of propaganda and things like this. And there's new information that, that people are, historians of the martial art are trying to dig up now. But the byline, the corporate byline of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is uh, Kano in Japan founded Judo. He had students that went around as emissaries. One of those emissaries was a name, uh, man, by name, uh, man by the name of Mietsu Maeda. Mietzo Maeda traveled Europe, traveled America, um, even went to the White House with another judoka as a junior to another judoka to teach uh, President Roosevelt jiu-jitsu. And really? yeah, there's stories. The story is at, at that point, the um, senior student wasn't supposed to accept any challenge matches. He accepted a challenge match against an American football player that happened to be at the White House. He was pinned by that. Uh, football player, he was disgraced, went back to Japan. Maeda was supposed to go back, but instead he wanted to prove jiu-jitsu in America, stayed and ended up prize fighting. Because of that, uh, Kano excommunicated him from the Kodokan in Japan, so he traveled more, ended up with a circus that did strongman and um, catch wrestling shows where they would take challengers, he ended up in Brazil. Um, in a Japanese colony around in the north of Brazil, there was a, a lawyer that lived up there that had moved with his family named uh, Gustavo Grace, Gustavo Gracie. He helped the Japanese with the legal paperwork. In payment for that, Miyato Maeda taught his sons jiu-jitsu. That was uh, Carlos, um, George, Osvaldo, and Elio supposedly didn't learn from Maeda. He was sick, sat on the side of the mat and learned by watching. Now it, you fast forward to the 50s, you end up with the two founders who are Carlos, the older brother, and Elios, the younger brother. They have a split and you end up with two sides of the family and you end up into modern times. All that being said, there was jiu-jitsu in Brazil in the 1800s. 
this is all, this whole story may just be propaganda so that the Gracie family could make, I probably shouldn't say it, <laughs> but so that they can make money in the States, make money in Brazil because it's called Gracie Jiu Jitsu instead of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in their family. Not taking anything away from them, they're all amazing fighters. I wouldn't be in the art if it wasn't for them as far as I'm concerned that my lineage goes up to Carlos Gracie, to Meatsu Maeda, to Kano. But there was already Jiu Jitsu in, in Brazil. There was always, already a live um, catch wrestling scene. There was already grappling in Brazil when this when Matsu Maeda came to Brazil. So fascinating story. <laughs> these are, wow. this story is called. Wow. You know, there's there are three or four volumes of pure historical uh, timeline stuff of of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and they're called Choke Volumes One, Two, and Three, and they go through the different histories that nobody. But we're just trying to dig these up now to find out this stuff. <clears throat> So um, let me bring another. So, uh, what do you think about Bruce Lee? Obviously, amazing. I mean, that's growing up when I grew up in a single. You know, my my mom, just my mom and I didn't have a father figure. So Bruce Lee was one of my father figures. So you know what I'm saying? So I searched for martial arts my whole life until I found kung fu, and from there, and that's his philosophy. You know, when I said to get the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu philosophy is to shave away the stuff that doesn't. I mean, that's obvious. Almost a direct quote from Bruce Lee. Yes. So. He was, he himself was getting into the jiu-jitsu and the catch wrestling r around the time that he died. Um, if you look at the Dao Jeet Kune Do, there's, there's arm locks, there's foot locks in there. Um, Danny Anasanto, his, you know, uh, guru Danny, his number one student is also a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. That's his main martial art now. So, what more do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> so, could we say that he was maybe sort of kind of the godfather of UFC type of thing? Yeah, I mean, he was there. I mean, Judo Jean LaBelle was, they were all about mixed martial arts. There were competitions like this, that's what I'm saying, in, in Brazil and in, in, in places like this where a boxer would fight a wrestler and things like that were all going on. What Bruce Lee did was try to, sorry, George. Nope. <laughs> was try to uh, break down all those traditional barriers earlier than, than they were, but he was just one man where Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has come in and, and broke those barriers down, you know, to where we realized that the UFC, the UFC was just to showcase Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, that's the Gracie family. They, they, Zufa and the Gracie family are the ones that started. Started right, of right. course, of course. What do you think about UFC? Now? Yes. It's monster truck racing to me. <laughs> I mean, it's great, the, guy, the guys are athletic, it's amazing, but I like the the heroes and the, and the storyline, almost like, you know, I mean, you, just because a guy lost a fight, maybe you still liked him as, as personality and he's going to come back. I, I don't yes, want yes. pro wrestling either, yes, but, right. but I like the olden days of the, of the mixed martial arts, the NHB. So do you think uh, UFC have came a long way comparing from the time of Tank Abbott? Let's of course, say, of course, of course, of course, of course. And I don't necessarily want... And now i got to take back everything I just said. <laughs> I'm not trying to these guys you. are amazing. These yeah. guys are amazing. It's yeah. just... It's... It's... it's it's those fighters are pre-corporated, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's cookie cutter in a, in a sense. I think it's amazing and stuff like that. And, I, and 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 but it just doesn't pull me in the way it used to. I mean, I mean, you can even see it if you see UFC one, two, three, or four or five yeah. compared to now. These guys are oh, they're amazing. They're amazing. They're, they it's it's you know put a basketball player against a basketball nowadays against a basketball team nowadays against a basketball team. In the 50s, you're going to see the uh, same thing. skateboarding, everything, definitely. But it's that corporation, uh, that that corporateness of it, I think, that I don't like. I don't mean to put you guys in, in this position, but what, what do you guys think about the fight between uh, Habib and uh, Conor McGregor, with the, that fight that went down? Uh, have any thoughts on that? <laughs> <I just don't> <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's just one-sided. It just proves, you know, just how talented Habib, I think. Yeah. On a fighting like, sense, yes, you got yes. to see good wrestling. Good, you know, Habib was was amazing in 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 the fight. The After fight. the fact, also, I thought it was kind of amazing because I want the realness. I understand even that realness was usurped and used for to sell more stuff. And and the, and the thing is, is that it only hurt Habib and and it only helped Connor because Connor was on the bandwagon. Connor was the face. Connor was going to make the money. You know, I don't know what's going on with Khabib now or anything like that, but I like the fight. I like that he jumped over the thing. I know it's a terrible thing, but it was real. He talked about his family. Exactly. You know, yeah. I really appreciate where is he from? saying that. You know, where is he from? Yeah. You know, I mean, not, that's not a, a stereotype, yeah. but it's something, his father still means something to him. 
And it's he religion, was, that's too. It, exactly. And who was Hus Habib scared of? Was he scared of Dana, Dana White? Who did he say he had to go answer to? To his father. You know, so these are the things that I liked. And, that, and that's what I liked about it. Um, I, I, I think I just read it that Dana White uh, reassigned him and, and he's going to have another fight. Okay. Yeah, because again, wasn't I'm sure with, to break, break out break out a glass when, when we need that money. You know, just keep them <laughs> let it let that let, let that wine age a couple of years before we break it out. And and Connor, I think he said he retired maybe yeah. for time being. Or I don't know what that means. <laughs> so he, it was a ten from, day retirement from clown school. Yeah, <laughs> attending. That's so, that's so mean. I know. I'm not saying that. Le okay. That left hand will knock me out. I'm not saying that it wouldn't. I'm not saying this. But so George. Um, you said you've been in it for seven years. Um, how much longer do you think you have until you get your black book? Not that no. right now you can't be most people's butt, but with the no. size and everything you that you have. But. Should I leave the room? <laughs> <laughs> if I, no matter what it is, the answer is going to be Chris is going to be like, yeah. If he says anything, he has to wait longer. <laughs> yeah. So. It's, it's not, not up to me. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's one of those things that happens when it happens. You don't, you know. I'm just kidding. I'm not, no, I know. You just. It just happens. You just, you just you're like you know at the beginning. You're like I never pictured myself was actually even staying as long as I have. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a fad for me six months. But I fell in love with it. So it's like when I got my blue belt, I'm like, oh wow, I actually did something. It's like same thing with every belt, you know. So I, I don't even see myself with a black belt, you know. But I love the the training, the regimen that's going in it, the whole the whole spirit spirituality that I'm, you know, with a, that comes with it, you know. To me, I'm happy with the aura that Jiu-Jitsu has given me because it gives you something different. That you know, it's something you can't explain. You know, it's not only everybody could go say, "Yeah, I do a Taekwondo class," or take, not to take away from it, of course, or a karate class. But this is a different feeling when you're like, "Ah, I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu," and you, you know, so the, the whole training and the whole thing. So who knows? Hopefully, and like be like Chris in 20 years, I could get a black belt. You know, <laughs> the longer I wait, the better for me. <laughs> Off the subject, actually, I see some of your work painting cars, and yeah. that is just mind blowing. I, yeah. I had no idea you had that kind of talent. I mean, uh, I, I'm not even sure why you don't. Uh, do you uh, paint cars for a living? Yeah, it it's is. unbelievable. I, yeah. I, I, I'm actually, I'm going to share some of some of the work that you did because I have some yeah. pictures of it. It's just mind blowing. So, um, if somebody's not in shape, or or if they're they're you know they're not really well stretched properly. Uh, can can jujitsu cause damage or problem to to the body? Or obviously, you guys will teach them right. about stretching and all that. That's mm. the point of jujitsu is to cause damage to other people's bodies. <laughs> so yes, to answer your question, <laughs> yes, it will. Um, yeah. How yeah. are you going to get in shape if you don't come? Right, yeah. exactly. We had a guy. We had a guy started with a body. Tiny. Uh, Kenny. Oh no. Ken, Kenny is another one. Kenny's, Carlos. Yeah. Carlos. This guy's like you know he had knee surgery. I thought he was, you know, like, he's, oh, I'm going to start, I'm going to start as soon as my knee heals up. I'm like, this guy's a big guy. I'm like, he's not going to, he like, he started, he's like 100 pounds already, lighter. Lighter? Yeah, in a year. And it's a thing, I hate when people like, you know, because I'm always talking about jujitsu. let's go, let's go. And people's main thing is, you say, oh, let me, let me get in shape. No, you're going to get in shape by actually doing it. Exactly. That's the thing. You're going to get in shape. You're going to. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> you're going to get in shape. That's the thing, you know. Like, you could go to the gym, lift weights, you know, but now you're over here lifting a weight that's trying to lift you back, too. Or, you know, now now the, the bench press is fighting you back. Now, you know, you, so you get more resistance. And you actually, so you're mixing, like, a cardio. It's a completely different type because, of you know, of getting fitter. So you can definitely lose it for weight loss, then, too. Oh, you could, you, oh. I'm going to send you a picture of this guy, and you're like, <laughs> man. And and I, know, I, I know George was white because the right alarm came on. I mean, you, 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 that only that only sounds if you say something that's correct. So good job. Uh, yes, like yes. you're not you're not going to get in any better shape than you do with jujitsu because you're going to get the tendon strength. You're going to get cut. You're going to get you're going to look good too. That's the other thing. Like you're going to be sweating like crazy. You're going to you know what I mean. So that's all there. If you but it's real. So exactly. it's it's intimidating. But you, you got to come down to get in shape. You're not going to get in shape thinking about it. And it seems like everything is working. Well, that, that day that I came down there and uh, watched you guys, I mean, it was just mind-blowing. It seems like every fiber of your muscle was the entire in time. action. The entire, the entire time. time. You know? And it's, if it's not tensed, it's, 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 it's lively. It's there. I can feel if he's going to move that arm by holding him here, you know, like this type of stuff. So. 
Yes, I definitely would love to come and take some classes. I always wanted to do that. Um, you know, I thought maybe I'm a little bit too old because I had all these surgeries and these injuries. Uh, me and Damien here, my producer director, we, we both want to come down and, and, and take some we classes. We want you to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I, uh, um, you know, I, I really wanted to do this, and especially hearing it fr from the masters. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's no fascinating. Do you, uh, one other question. Do you, uh, did you ever compete at all uh, in jiu-jitsu? I did, but younger. Younger. Also, yeah, my partner is more of the competitor. He goes and does He still work. competes? Yeah, this guy competes too. He no. won his, his brown belt division in the IBJJF no. last year. No, blue, uh, purple. That wasn't brown yet? No, not yet. Okay. I got to do it this year. <laughs> now, <laughs> now he has to. I, I want to be there, man. Now he has to. Now I have to. <laughs> Even, the guy even knew the choke he was going to use on him. He said, you're not going to get that choke on me. He got it. <laughs> <laughs> do, uh, where, uh, where do you guys compete usually? Uh, around here locally? Local. I mean, there's, they're all over. Um, I mean, all over the States and all over, all over the world. But, yeah, here, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, and in New York are the three main, our four main places. Any, uh, uh, I know Batista comes on there once in a while mm -hmm. uh, in your places. And uh, so do you guys get any type of celebrities or anybody who comes on yeah, here from yeah. time to time? Yeah, but yeah, I know you don't want to talk. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Chris, Chris is the biggest one. Well, it's our local celebrity. You know, first one. Local I celebrity, maybe. <laughs> First, when I met Chris, and I'm like, God, can you imagine if this guy, man, you say something wrong to this guy in a dark alley, and he has no not idea that. what he can do to you? You gave me the reaction I usually get, but this guy's the teacher? <laughs> That's the reaction I usually get. <laughs> it's not really about how, obviously, in this industry, it's not about how big you are. No, 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 that's, how... that's why jiu-jitsu. And bring more points. Um, Joey, my partner, and I, we're both smaller guys. Joey's... We, we fluctuate between 130 and 145 wow. in, that, in that range. But we're going against 200 pound monsters constantly, so, so our jiu-jitsu has to be super precise. And that's what's awesome about jiu-jitsu is that it's so powerful. You were asking about proficiency, things like that. There's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's something that would make you proficient just by giving you confidence. Like I just made this guy go over on his back, and it wasn't hard because I used the technique. And that's more confidence, more in that maybe you won't get in a fight because you look confident. Who knows? So you use like his own body weight. Absolutely, like absolutely. That's it. Do, do you think that people that who weighs a little bit more have more? Uh, uh, they, they they can. Uh, they have advantages. In this yeah, that's what I was saying. They have advantages in this. I mean, I don't want George on top of me, you know. But he's going to get on top of me, and I'm going to want to get away as best. I'm probably going to get smushed. But, but there's advantages and disadvantages. You know, some people like to be big and stuff. I like, I want to be smaller, believe it or not, you know. Do you think if you're uh, muscular, it's, it's uh, in your advantage or disadvantage? Because if you're too muscular, obviously, you can't really, you know, you're not as flexible. It depends on how you use them and your mindset. If you're like, I'm muscle, you're gonna get wrecked. But if you're like, I'm a jiu-jitsu player who has muscle, and now I'm in the right position, I can put all of this much more strength into this right position. I mean, George should probably talk. He's a lot no, stronger than me. Thing, in, no. You don't muscle yes, I, things. You still use the technique, but once you're there, you have the muscle to hold it in. And once you learn how to use that and relax on it, the muscle acts completely different than when, when you're relaxed, you know? So you, you just bring it out whenever you need it. You could add, what's it, technique? You could add uh, technique to strength, but you can't add one or the other. You, <laughs> know, you can add strength to <laughs> technique, but you can't yeah, add yeah, technique absolutely. to strength. No, that yeah, makes a lot of know? sense. If I go in over there rolling with Chris and he, I'm just going crazy, he's just go arm bar, we do something because, you know, but learn how to relax and learn how to use your muscles and strength to add it to it. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. That is awesome. Damien, uh, so uh, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, both of you, so no, much. Thank you guys uh, for having us. You know, uh, you always, you always been so kind to me. And, and uh, I'm getting to know you even more and all the way around not only about jujitsu it seems to me that you have a lot of uh, uh, knowledge about many many other stuff and I really enjoy talking to you about many uh, different subjects and we will yeah. in the future but I, I want to thank both yeah. of you thank and maybe you uh, God's willing uh, I, I want to invite you guys again maybe even your partner you know all yeah. three of you come down Shut here <laughs> so, uh, we you know we, we doing these podcasts on a regular basis and uh, I'm honored and this was my privilege honestly to uh, have both of you down here thank you so much thank you, thank you.